Welcome to Shop Forming Garage. Today working with World Car Auto Group and we're looking at this 2017 Kia Nero, which has a unique problem um, that's already been diagnosed. So the customer is complaining uh, about a humming vibration noise in the front end while driving and also the AC does not turn off at all. I mean the blower motor doesn't turn off. It's always on unless you turn the key off then it turns off but as long as the key's on the blower motor is always going. Where it's going we don't know but it's going and uh, that has been diagnosed as an AC control head so we have parts so we're going to put the AC control head in and see if that fixes it. Uh, it's been diagnosed that the right front hub assembly is making noise also so we're going to drive it and see if we can duplicate that issue before we just throw a hub assembly at it and uh, we're gonna get into that right now <laughs> oh no I'm listening to this blower motor go and I mean it's it's I don't know if you can hear it uh, it's the wind wind is coming out you know and uh, the AC system is off everything here is off and I can turn it on and, and I can feel the wind coming out and it's cool it's getting cool but if I turn it off it's off and the wind is still coming out. It's always on high, no matter what. Even if I turn it on, try to turn this down, it doesn't matter. It's on high, just blowing high. Turn it off, it's on high. And if I turn the vehicle off, then it, it shuts down. But um, uh, another uh, thing about this is the mileage this vehicle has 234,851 miles and that's that's a lot for me i think this is the highest mileage uh kia nero i've ever seen it's a 2017. um so let's uh test drive this vehicle see if we can hear that noise over there and then uh, let's get into it let's just start replacing parts and see what happens a short test drive right now and yeah I can hear something uh, I can it does sound like it's coming from the front I don't know if you can hear that it's hard to hear because the blower won't shut off it just it, it, I can't turn the blower off I just hear the, the air just the wind is just blowing you know but yeah I can definitely hear something going on and it sounds like it's in the front it's been diagnosed as the front right hub wheel bearing assembly. And if I swerve it, a lot of times, it, if you do that, if you swerve the vehicle back and forth, I, you know, you got to be safe. You know, don't do it at, you know, 100 miles an hour. But um, a lot of times, when a hub bearing or wheel bearing is uh, starting to go out if you swerve it back and forth especially if it's a front hub bearing whenever like for instance the right front hub bearing say it's going out if i swerve to the left it puts more of a load on that side it puts more of a load on the right front hub bearing and uh, because of that you can hear it more so kind of swerving back and forth at low speeds you can hear the noise come in and come out and come in and come out and usually if you're turning left and the noise gets louder then it's the right uh, hub bearing if you're turning right and the noise gets louder that's the left hub bearing so it, this one you know it's uh, it's really hard to tell uh, but it's definitely coming from the front so uh, let's get her back to the shop and uh, 
see what uh, see what we can find, or maybe we'll just throw that hub bearing on, see what happens. That sounds like an easier task. But uh, first, I'd like to get this this AC control head replaced, or see if our, our blower motor stops blowing all the time. So let's get back to the shop. So I'm going to take this shifter out. I'm gonna take this upper console out. I probably need to take this entire panel off, possibly, and then uh, pull out this AC control head and then get this trim off to go over the new control head. So let's get started on that right now. So here's the new one. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this thing in and see if it actually works. Of course, I need to get the start stop button plugged in too. So that's plugged in, and the start stop button is right here. So let me plug that in. Okay, so the blower is on. Nope. That did not fix it. Will not turn off. Hmm, I have to diagnose this. Here is where I'm at with this thing. The, uh, of course you saw this didn't fix it. I uh, put the new uh, control head on and didn't fix it. Um, and I went ahead and uh, checked all the powers, powers and grounds coming to this, uh, these connectors right here and this thing sends a ground whenever you turn the well i don't i don't know for sure what it's supposed to do because kia doesn't tell us you know but uh one, one thing i do know for sure is it's sending a ground from this connector down through this connector right here and into the uh, engine compartment to the relay which turns the blower motor relay on so the blower motor gets power and with the uh, AC turned off, it's still getting that ground. So it just seems kind of weird to me that we're getting ground, um, we're getting that relay to turn on even when the AC system is off. Whether it's supposed to work like that or not, I don't know, because Kia doesn't tell us. But um, that's that's what's happening. I can disconnect this uh, connector down here. Uh, pull, as a matter of fact, I pulled one of the pins out. Um, I can disconnect this connector down here and um, it will shut the blower motor off, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the problem. Then I got uh, this wire back here uh, that sends a pulse width modulation signal to the blower motor and the blower motor has power and ground and has the pulse width. And uh, I'll show you the schematic on all this so you can better understand what I'm talking about. But I pulled this connector out right here and I pulled it out of the blower motor, which is way down there. And I ohmed out that connection, that pulse width connection. And uh, I ohmed out the, the circuit anyway. And the circuit was good. And I checked it for short to ground, 
uh, because I'm not sure what it's pulsing. Is it pulsing power? Is it pulsing ground? What is it doing? Kia's not telling us anything. Um, and uh, everything that I checked out looks fine, uh, which is probably the reason why this uh, AC control head was replaced uh, because everything looks good. It's got to be the control head. Well, obviously it's not. Yeah. Um, and what's the chances of this control head being bad? Uh, yeah, it's a possibility, but both control heads doing the exact same issue. That's kind of weird. That's really weird. And uh, what was another thing? There, uh, There's a way to go into this system and you hold the uh, off button and you push the, the mode button like more than four times in two seconds and it will set a test code will come up on the uh, display, display screen here. And uh, there's a whole slew of codes right here that uh, I can go through to see what's going on. But you know what? It's not setting a single code. Everything's good. That's what it's saying. So uh, I went ahead and I had to contact uh, the Kia technical assistance line because I don't know where to go with this. And the good thing about those guys is it's not that they know everything, but uh, they are sitting right next to a room that is full of Kia engineers that are supposed to know everything because they built this stuff. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll find out, you know, I mean, uh, I don't know what else to do, but for now, I got all, all the stuff tore apart. Uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and start on that right front hub assembly and we'll uh, take that apart and uh, replace the hub assembly and at least see if one thing, you know, works right today. Maybe. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, before we get on to that hub assembly, I wanted to show you what I was talking about, what I'm dealing with here. And uh, here's the blower relay, here's the blower motor. Here's the control module, the AC controller that we replaced. And right here, the blower relay controller is sending up a ground to this relay. This relay has power coming in from this AC uh, fuse right here. And so that in doing that would close this circuit, allowing this uh, power to come all the way down to the blower motor to turn the blower motor on. The blower motor is grounded right here. This doesn't have a resistor. It sends this pulse width modulation um, to signal to the blower motor to tell it the, how, what, what speed it should be going. And of course the blower motor is on high the whole time. You turn this off and the blower motor stays on. If you disconnect this connector right here, the blower motor turns off. So uh, we're losing ground right here. And when we lose ground right here, this relay turns off so the blower motor has no power. Um, I disconnected this connector and I'll show you, um, I, I pulled a pin out of that thing um, just so I could uh, diagnose it. And even with the pin out on this side right here, I'm getting ground. Uh, <clears throat> of course, when uh, even when the, the ignition switch is turned on and this is plugged in, of course, I'm getting ground on this side. But of course, then this, uh, the blower motor doesn't come on because this, this is an open circuit then. Uh, but because of that, I was able to isolate this by disconnecting it here and here, ohming out this circuit, and the circuit's good. It's not shorted to ground or anything. So the ground has, obviously has to be coming from the controller. And is that supposed to be getting ground the entire time that the vehicle's turned on? I don't know. Kia won't tell me. But it is. So why would this be supplying ground when it's not supposed to be supplying ground unless this controller is bad? Which is why the controller was probably diagnosed as being bad in the first place. And um, so then on the other side of it is this pulse width modulation. It ha what signal is this exactly sending? And this shows signal here. This shows uh, PWM in right here. So is it sending a signal back telling the controller what speed this is going? It does not make any sense and I cannot find any information about it. But I did disconnect this circuit right here at the blower motor. And uh, whenever uh, I pulled this pin out and when I did, the blower stayed on full blast and uh, I ohm this circuit out and this circuit is good and it's not shorted to ground or anything either. Um, another weird thing is I found out that if I start the vehicle up and have this pin pulled out, the AC compressor doesn't even come on. 
Um, so yeah, that's a weird thing too. Don't know why, have no idea. So this is just uh, kind of what I've been dealing with, uh, trying to go through with everything that I've looked at. It's telling me it's got a bad AC controller, which I understand why it was diagnosed as such. And now it's up to TechLine to tell me what I need to go through, what I need to check next. It's kind of weird that the there is no controller going through the PCM or anything like that. There's no other module that actually operates this AC system. It's just the controller. And um, controller, relays, power, ground, that's it. I checked all the powers, all the grounds, everything's good. So it's kind of weird. Of course, uh, on these electronical devices, weird things happen sometimes when certain things don't have a good connection or whatever, just like uh, disconnecting that pulse width connector at the blower motor. The blower motor stays on high the whole time and the AC won't cool just because that one circuit is off and that has nothing to do with the compressor, it only has to do with the blower motor. Why does that happen? Don't know. And it didn't set a code either. It is an automatic uh, system, so it should be able to set codes and stuff, and it's not setting any code. I can go in and look in the data, and there's no data that actually shows me what blower motor's doing. It only shows me actuators and stuff like that. So we'll wait and see what Kia says, but for now, let's, let's get to that hub assembly. This is what we are going to do. I need to disconnect this. I'm gonna pull the uh, caliper and bracket off. Then there's a couple bolts inside. Let's see, inside there. It's like one of them over there. So there's like four of them. Get those four bolts out <clears throat> to get the, the hub off. Uh, first, we need to pull the bracket off, pull the um, rotor off. Need to take this nut. It looks like this nut has already been pulled off and put back on. They didn't replace it. it hasn't been staked. I wonder if it was even torqued. And that not torquing these things can definitely cause these bearings to go out. Uh, they have to be torqued because uh, if you put it too tight, the preload is too tight on the bearing. The bearing will go out. Don't put it tight enough. It's too loose. The bearing will go out. So it has to be torqued to the proper spec. And look at at this nut on here and the way that it looks like it has been messed up taken off put on taken off put on who knows so i need to get these these um screws out of here screw bolts to get this rotor off so uh that's what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna pull the whole thing apart this is uh what the new one looks like get this out of the bag here Get this off of here. Okay. Get this out of here. So, no big deal. It's just a new hub. New hub and bearing. So, that is it. So, let's get this other one off and uh, get the new one on and let's go.
Okay, we need to replace this nut that was on there. It was in really bad condition. And I got a brand new one here. And you should always replace these. Every time they come off, you need to put a new one on. So I'm gonna get this one on here. And we need to torque it down. It looks like somebody kind of tulip this end right here. So I hope it's good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it down with an impact. And then I'm gonna torque it. That's it. I didn't tighten it, I just ran it down. So now I get the torque wrench. and turn this on so the spec is uh 205 to 217 foot pounds so i gotta run this all the way up i'm going to put it at the minimum i'm gonna put it at 205 because whenever whenever you torque it it always torques it comes out to more then uh, what you said, you end up uh, turning it more than you think you're gonna. So now I need to get something to stop this wheel from spinning. And I'm gonna stick this, this up against the caliper like that, just like that. And keep it in place. Don't let it slip off. Okay. Keep the thing in place. Right there. So it ended up going to 214.2. So that's why I said it to 205. So 205 to 217, it's right within spec. So now we need to stake, I'm gonna stake it in and get a kind of a blunt chisel so we can find one, yep. A blunt chisel, my hammer, and I'm gonna stake these sides in just like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Just like that. So that stake down in there. Same way on this side. So that's how you do it. And so let me put this wheel and everything back together and then we should probably go and test drive that but need to see if uh, tech client has gotten back with any information yet this is what's going on with this vehicle um, it's been a couple days I have been in contact with uh, Kia tech line and we've been going back and forth I've been uh, testing circuits <clears throat> I got uh, everything, you know, tore apart in here, as you know, and one thing that we found out is uh, the customer had the windshield replaced, and uh, when the windshield was replaced, that's when it started having this issue with the blower motor not turning off, and uh, they were told by another technician that, um, that uh, they needed to replace the defroster fog sensor, and that's this sensor right here. So the customer took it back to, and that sensor comes with a windshield. Um, and this is an aftermarket windshield. The customer took it back to the aftermarket company that put the windshield in and they warrantied a new sensor and they put that new sensor in uh, and it's still having an issue. Uh, Techline is saying that that sensor is probably causing the issue and that we need to sell the customer an OEM 
uh, defog, uh, hum humidify, humidity sensor or something. I think that's what they call it. And uh, so now the customer is mad and uh, they don't want to do anything. So they don't want to uh, do the sensor. They don't want to do the AC control head. And so this control head is uh, going back and the customer will pay a restocking fee. Um, and I will put the old um, parts back into the vehicle and put the entire vehicle back together and uh, the customer will take the vehicle and probably never come back. Uh, that's just the way it goes. Uh, there's no way that uh, anyone could ever know what the real issue is. And uh, we've gone through the diagnostic on this. I've shown you uh, the flow chart and everything that I found which points directly to the AC control head. So it uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, it could possibly make sense that somehow this uh, sensor right here is shorting something out, causing the AC control head to short out or something. I don't know. But um, either way, uh, we're done. Uh, I need to put this uh, whole vehicle back together and I'm gonna get uh, into doing that right now. Okay, this has been kind of a weird one. The customer has declined any more work. So I put everything back together and I am gonna go drive it just to make sure that that hub bearing, the new hub bearing is good, which it probably is. But um, that's it for this one. Uh, so thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one.